Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today we have the Rainbow J Fashion collaboration done for Pride this year. This collaboration was hosted by Dollyanna and the rest of the artists who took part are Rainstorm Creations, Cute and Cursed, Blurred Colors Art, Stitchwick Creations, Boho Punks, Summoning Dragon Illustrated, Nelumbo Dolls, and then there were two more artists who didn't quite make the deadline for the photos, and those were Telly E Dolls and Electric Bunny VT. Before we get started on the doll, I just would like to mention that this video is sponsored by Munbin. They sent me one of their portable thermal printers to test out. I'll be using it for making the pattern pieces for the clothes, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's start prepping the doll. For this custom, I wanted to use a Kitty Cheshire Ever After High doll. I have two in my stock box. One of them was a custom that I bought from another artist that had abandoned it. So she's already had some work done and has some issues from that. I do have the other artist's permission. They sold me the doll with the intent of me going ahead, wiping her and recustomizing. I did want to add that little disclaimer because typically I consider it disrespectful to wipe another artist's work or to alter another custom doll considerably without the artist's permission. She had a broken neck peg and instead of anchoring it, it looks like the previous artist had just tried to use hot glue to secure the neck and it didn't really work. So I probably could have just pulled the head right off, but this does soften the hot glue a little bit and make the vinyl easier for me to work with when plucking out the unused yarn rooting. Thankfully, I do have the original neck peg to work with, so I will be able to fix that later. Before I do that, however, I'm going to quickly throw the head into the boiling water in my tea kettle. The holes left over from rerooting are kind of large, and there are a few places where the vinyl seemed like it was almost going to split. Heating the head will help the vinyl return back to its original shape, and the holes will shrink. And as per usual, I remove her face with 100% acetone and a cotton pad. There's a little bit of staining on her eyes from the green acrylic paint that was used, but we can work with that. Before continuing, I sew the hole in her head closed with a needle and thread. Normally, I would go ahead and start the reroute at this point, but my package from Munbin arrived. I'm just going to do a quick unboxing and show a few of the things that the printer came with. I really like their little character mascot that's on the box. He's cute. And I was super excited to see that they sent me the pink version of the printer. This little USB card reader was very useful in getting set up to get the printer to work on my computer. It is a portable printer, but I decided to just go ahead and use it on my desktop because that's where I already have all of my patterns saved. It just made more sense for me to go ahead and print them from that instead of downloading them to my phone to try to use it mobily. It's small, it's light, it opens pretty easily, and it came with this roll of, I think, A4 paper pre-installed. They also sent me a ream of their folding letter-sized paper, and I really preferred working with this. I had no issues printing with the other one, but I had a problem like tearing off the roll and making a straight tear. I kept tearing it on a diagonal. With the roll of paper removed, I was able to feed in the folded paper through the back of the printer and print out my designs. I printed two things to test the printer out. One was the Petite Slimline Princess Mega Pack from Requiem Arts, and then the other was a coloring page that I designed. I printed the coloring page mostly to see how it would do with heavy blacks and fine lines, something that wasn't quite as technical as a clothing pattern. I think it did really well with both, and I'm actually quite impressed. With the patterns printed, I go ahead and cut them out so that I can transfer them to my fabric. I also use the Super Stretch pattern from Requiem Arts. This is what I will be using to make her leggings. Her tail kept getting in the way of test fitting, so let's go ahead and remove that now. Then I continue by making her a petticoat or underskirt out of this stretchy white lace. For the black fabric, I transfer the patterns with a white charcoal pencil. 
This is actually my second attempt at making a dress for this doll. I had originally printed a completely different set of patterns and used satin for everything. And I don't feel like I will work with satin for a long, 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 long time after this. I'm incredibly impressed with anyone who is able to work with it on a small scale. It frays really, really badly, and my dress was literally falling apart at the seams by the time I got the bodice done. So cotton and a tiny bit of silk it is. I use my hair straightener to iron the fabric as I go. The thermal paper is nice and thin, and it made transferring the pattern to the fabric pretty easy. I even went through and cut out the darts from the bodice and traced them onto the bodice pattern. I don't usually do this, but I think it helped keep my stitching a lot more accurate for this step. I continue by sewing the back pieces to the front piece of the bodice. I iron the seams so that they lay flat in one direction. I want to reduce the bulk as much as I can. Then I gather the top and bottom of the sleeves and sew the cuff on. Once I'm satisfied with the way the sleeves are gathered, I sew them right sides together to the bodice. I do all of this by hand because after my poor experience sewing the satin dress, which was all on my machine, I just wanted to keep everything as accurate as possible. I sew the collar on off camera and pin the back to test the fit. Now for her skirt, I will be using my machine. This is a lot of gathering, hemming, and sewing layers together, so I don't need to be quite as accurate as I did for the bodice. This first purple ruffle that I did, I accidentally went out of order a little bit. You're supposed to hem it and then do the gathering. I ran the gathering stitch and then hemmed it, but it was fine. Then I attach the ruffle to the bottom of the skirt, right sides together, and flip it upside down, kind of like a cuff. For the rest of the ruffles, I sew them wrong side to right side, or bad side to good side, depending on how you like your terms. Each layer of ruffles covers the seam of the one below it, so it's not as obvious. And for the top purple ruffle, the bodice gets sewn upside down, good side to good side, and that seam is covered. I decided three quarters of the way through the skirt to add another layer of ruffles. I don't recommend doing this out of order because it was a lot more difficult to get the placement right. It's best if you work from the bottom all the way up to the top. Pinning this was a little easier since I had some help from my assistant. Once I have all of the ruffles in place, I sew a straight running stitch along the top of the skirt and pull one of the threads tight to gather the top. Then I pin the bodice upside down, right side to right side to the skirt and sew it off screen. I really wanted some of my ribbons to have black pinstriping and I didn't have anything quite like this. So I'm taking an Arteza fabric marker and just drawing lines down a white ribbon. The color gets locked in whenever you heat it, so I just run it through my hair straightener after I'm done. Then I fold over a short piece of ribbon and sew it in the center. Then I take another piece of ribbon cut at an angle and sew that to the original folded piece. I make a couple of different makeshift bows this way. Then I hand stitch the bows to the dress. I alternate colors and designs across the dress to keep it visually interesting. I'm trying to stay within a color palette of black, purple, gray, and white for this doll. And here's the finished dress. I also attached some white cuffs and a white bib with some cotton ribbon and just hand stitching them to those areas. Now that the dress is done, let's move on to her hair. I got this odd kind of obscure silver synthetic fiber from AliExpress. It was called something like milk silk 
fiber or something like that, I'm going to look for a link in my order history and provide it below because I actually really liked working with it. Aside from experimenting with the hair type, I also want to try styling the hair in a different way. The hair was already in this loose twist braid, so I'm gonna go ahead and wind it really, really tightly, let it wind up on itself, and then pour some boiling water on it and see what happens. I dug it out from the water while it was still hot, then I stretched it out on a cloth and secured it in place to let it dry overnight. The next morning, it had retained the coil shape. It still wanted to fold over a little bit in the center where I had let the braid coil in on itself, but it held its shape really well and I wasn't expecting ringlets or tight curls with this, but I ended up with something a lot like beach curls or beach waves and I'm very happy with it. Off camera, I painted her head with a mix of one-to-one -one Mod Podge and gray paint. I have a reroute tool that is just like a little drill chuck with a basting needle that has the eye cut off at a 45 degree angle. I wrap the thread around my finger and catch the hair in the eye of the needle. I then plunge it into the doll's head. I start by going around the perimeter of the hair, then I fill in most of the head and finish by filling in the part. As I work on the part for the hair, I crisscross the fibers and snap them in place with some barrettes. Whenever I'm happy with the thickness of the part, I fill the head with Fabri-Tac glue through the neck hole. I let the head sit upside down for about a day. Once this is done, I typically would go ahead and boil wash the hair, but this time I decided to try to set the part in place a little differently. I put a large satin ribbon over her hair to kind of shield it a little bit and I use my miniature iron to set the hair in place, particularly focusing on the part line and any of the edges that I feel stick up a little bit. I decided not to do a boil wash this time because I didn't want to accidentally straighten her pre-waved hair. Before doing the face up, I want to go ahead and fix her neck peg really quickly. I have a piece of thick floral wire that I will be using to replace the small bar that has broken off and gotten lost. I cut this down to size with a pair of wire cutters. Then I glue it in place using Loctite gel super glue. It's a little finicky to get into the right position. And once I have the peg in place, I hold the wire with my finger and wiggle the peg back and forth so that the wire cures, but the peg does not. Then I take the smallest amount of epoxy sculpt that I can manage to fill the hole in her neck. I still accidentally used slightly too much and the amount that I had left over was just too small and I actually had to throw it away without making it into something else this time. Once I'm happy with the shape of the neck, I go ahead and use some water to smooth it out. Then, while it's curing, I buff the body. There were a lot of odd little stains and paint splatters that were left over on her. She had these off-green cat-clawed hands that came with her. I went ahead and wiped them with acetone, but they had some staining, and I'm just going to go ahead and mix up a new lilac color for her with some purple, pink, and white. I'm going to paint the epoxy repair on her neck and her hands. Her hands took probably about three coats of paint to be the right color. And since she had these stains on her eyes, I go ahead and I do a single layer of acrylic in the mixed color over that. Later, I'll be dusting over this with some pastels and it'll even it out a lot more. While her hands and neck dry, I'm going to go ahead and customize some shoes for her. I measured the seaweed strap off camera to see where it would go across her ankle. This way they look a little bit like Mary Jane's. Then I give the shoes a few coats with black acrylic paint. After that's dry, I seal them with Sculpey Gloss Glaze. Now it's time for the face up. Off camera, I spray the doll with Mr. Super Clear Sealant. Before I start drawing or laying down any other hues, I'm going to try and equalize the pigment shift between the old yellow vinyl and the painted over eyes. To do this, I give her a layer of Lilac Pan Pastels. 
To keep her face from being too monochromatic, I will be working in quite a bit of pinks and reds and a few browns. I decided to mostly use the ace flag colors for her outfit, but I will also be using them quite a bit in her face as well. Usually I start by sketching out the eye shape and the eyebrows, but this time I wanted to lay down a couple of base layers of pastels since they're really going to be used for blending everything together in this face up. Pan pastels are quite pigmented and to get the colors that I want, since I have a limited number of them, I'm working on the face in one layer and mixing the pigments on the vinyl. I'm still using the face molding for the eyes and the mouth to guide where I'm placing my pastels. Once I'm pretty happy with the base color layer, I start sketching in her eyebrows with a gray watercolor pencil. I plan for my character to have quite heavy makeup and have heavy eyeshadow, so I will be drawing in her eyelids a little bit smaller than the molded on eyes. As I continued to work on this face, she started to remind me a little bit of Ursula from The Little Mermaid, so I kind of, I think, accidentally leaned into that. I meant for her to be cute and happy looking, but she has kind of a mischievous or almost villainous expression. I sketch her eyes out in a little more detail, adding the irises and her eyelashes with a dark brown pencil. Then I go over them with a black pencil. This is going to be covered a few times with more pastels, so I'll be going back in on additional layers and darkening her eyelashes. On the second layer of her face, I was finally able to start adding in some highlights. It wasn't taking very much pigment, especially from my white pencil on the first layer. I think this is probably because of how thickly I laid down the pan pastels originally. Then I go in with pink, purple, brown, and black to add in an auburn kind of gradient around the edges of her eyes. As I work, I highlight the upper corners of her brows with white pastels. I use my kneaded eraser to clean up the edges of her lipstick. I pull down some of the black eyeshadow into her eye whites to add a shadow effect. At this point, I really wasn't sure what color I wanted her lipstick to be, so you'll see me mixing in purple, pink, black, and red onto her lips several times. I finally settled on a sort of dark red that kind of goes into black, but I'm not even sure what to call it. I add more purple to her eyeshadow and continue highlighting her face in various places with white pastels. These get diminished quite a bit whenever I add another layer of sealant, so I also accentuate the highlights with a white watercolor pencil. Then I go through with my black watercolor pencil and darken the edges of her irises. I also accentuate the white highlight in her pupils with my black pencil. When I'm just about done with this layer, I go in with my Pearl X powdered pigments and I give her face a dusting. I add purple to her eyeshadow and white to her overall face. This also, like the pastels, gets darkened or faded quite a bit whenever I seal the next layer, so I will add another layer of this as I go. On the third layer, I pretty much am just repeating all of the steps from the previous layers, making everything more pigmented. 
I won't be doing a lot more blending with the pastels at this point, so I'm going in with my pencils and having them extra sharp to crispen up the edges a lot. I focus on the wrinkles for her eyelids, her eyelashes, and her waterline. I also sharpen up her cat eye quite a bit. I did kind of a graphic eyeliner with this and did a downturned bottom lid. I saw it a few times in different gothic Lolita makeup and I liked the way it looked. I'm planning on this being the last layer, so I want to really make sure that her teeth are nice and white. I wet the tip of my white watercolor pencil and just draw it straight onto the doll's face. Then I go through one final time with my black pencil and clean up her eyeliner. I give her a final spray of Mr. Super Clear off camera. Now that her face is done, I'm going to give her a little bit of life with some gloss to her eyes and lips. I use Super Sculpey Gloss Glaze for this. I just went ahead and dabbed it directly onto her face this time and brushed it out with a small brush. With her face done, let's go ahead and put what we have all together and see how she's looking. With her all dressed, I reunite her head with her body. I give her head a squeeze around her lower jaw and gently wriggle it over the neck peg. Now that I have her head back on her body, I can see the length that I would like to get her hair trimmed to. The edges of her hair were pretty damaged, I think just from the hair being packaged in the plastic bag that it came in, and it may have gotten more damaged whenever I did the twist wrap. So I'm mostly just trimming those frayed edges. Once I have all of the damage removed, I hold the doll upright and I cut into her hair at an angle to kind of feather it and make it less blunt. I still felt like she was missing something and in my original idea, I had wanted to make a bonnet for the doll, but I ran out of time. So instead, I'm going to make her a simple headpiece. I cut a small circle out of craft foam. Then I take a black lace ribbon and gather it on one side. This gives me a nice flared ruffle that I can hand stitch right into the craft foam. To secure the headpiece to the doll, I'm going to be using a purple ribbon. Using a needle and thread, I stitch the ribbon to the other side of the craft foam. For a little bit more visual interest and color balance, I take light, purple satin ribbons and I remove the green leaves off of them. Then I hand stitch each one into the headdress. Then I tie it to her head like a headband, making a bow at the bottom. I secure this in place with a pin before tying the bow and then trimming the ribbon down. 
And with that, she's done. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you had a good June, a good Pride, and that you enjoyed the rest of the J Fashion dolls in our collaboration. Hopefully, I will be able to do more Japanese-inspired street fashion dolls. I really love Lolita fashion, but there are so many sub-genres for it, and I feel like they aren't really tackled very often. So for me, it was a lot of fun to see everyone be really creative with their source inspiration. Don't forget to check out everyone else's videos. They're all linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.